All right, Brain, let's change some brakes. I see we've got this, uh, the wheel off. We're up on jack stands up on the lift where it's pretty easy to work on. Uh, and we've got our wheel off. Other than that, we're pretty much uh, pretty much there. Uh, what kind of special tools are we going to need to do this job? There's just a couple that we really need. And one to remove the screw from the, uh, from the rotor is a uh, size 50 uh, Torx wrench. A Torx. Uh, size 50. You can get this in an auto parts the auto, store, right? Auto parts store, exactly. Okay, sounds good. It's also uh, our our flare nut on our on our brake line is a 11 millimeter. I like to have a uh, a regular flare nut tool. It, it grips it from four sides okay. instead of two, like a regular wrench, and doesn't eat up those uh, those nuts. You could use a, a regular 11 millimeter mm -hmm. uh, open end wrench on that, couldn't you? You you could, but exactly. But this, this will keep you from from. This is nice. Too. A uh, 10 millimeter Allen key. 10 millimeter Allen. That's for our bolts uh, for the calipers. Right, for the uh, calipers. Uh huh. And that's really, in terms of special tools, other than uh, a couple of sockets and hand tools. Well, they told me you'd made us a special tool in your own hand. Oh, I actually did. My, uh, my brake depressor. Uh huh. Uh, uh, this, what we're going to do with this is since we don't have an anti drain back valve on our master cylinder which is going to prevent the brake fluid from leaking out. We're going to just slightly depress the pedal, maybe oh, an inch or so, and uh, put this end under the brake pedal, this end into the, uh, the seat, and we're just, that's going to hold it in place for us. And what will that do for us? That will keep the brake fluid from uh, draining out of the line and okay. not make quite a big mess and drain the uh, reservoir on the master cylinder. Well, that sounds like a good idea. Then we're not going to have to do as much bleeding as we otherwise would? We shouldn't have to do as much bleeding if all this works out. Yeah, well, <laughs> we'll see. Okay, <laughs> let's uh, let's install this puppy. Perfect. All right, Brian, show me your stick. Just going to take it, knock the part in the pedal, into the seat, and that's it. So we're just holding the pedal in place with that stick. Hold, holding uh, the pedal slightly down. That gives it a little bit of pressure so we don't uh, don't leak off our fluid. That should do it for us. Oh, cool. Good. So we don't need too many special tools we talked about before. For this, to remove the brake lines, we're going to have a 17 millimeter wrench. We're going to have our uh, 11 millimeter. And we've got a, a brake bleeder valve cap that we're going to head and use and uh, try to cap this off if there is any dripping coming out of that hard uh, brake line. We've got a couple of rags. And a little cup, just in case we need to catch any brake fluid. Okay. And we've got that to hand tight. ahead and put that brake bleeder valve cap on there. Next thing we're going to have to do, pull this uh, brake line out of the hanger, the grommet, and we've got that accomplished. Okay. All right, the next step then on the uh, driver's side of the car is we're going to remove the brake wear indicator. Uh, it's located right here between the uh, between the caliper. Best thing to use is a set of needle nose pliers. We're going to grab onto it and just pull forward gently. And we've got that out. It's also uh, routed here through the uh, brake bleeder valve. And we'll just go ahead and put that on so we don't get any contaminants in our old caliper. And there we go. All right, so next step then is to uh, remove the caliper. What we're going to do is use a 5 8 wrench. I'm going to start with the bottom bolt, which is down here. So I'll go ahead and remove that, completely let it hang on the top one. Again, once it gets hand tight, a little quicker just to do it with your fingers. And we're going to move to the top bolt here.
to support that caliper in your hand so it doesn't drop off. And voila. All right, and our next step now is to go ahead and remove the, uh, remove the rotor from the hub. We're going to take our uh, number 50 torque and then go ahead and put it in. Back that off. Again, hold on to the rotor. Not being quite as careful here with my hand cleanliness as I will when we put it all together. So let's go ahead and now we've got that off. Now we're going to remove the brake backing plate or dust plate. Um, this whole system is going to move a little more inboard and this uh, backing plate is just going to get in the way. What kind oh. of bit are you using there, Brain? Well, I, I lied to you guys. We do need another torque bit. This is a uh, number 25 so that will take this off. Really available at any automotive parts uh, Available store. in any automotive, uh, automotive parts store. Check your toolbox. Usually you have some laying around. You just don't know it. Yeah, but I don't know what size they are. And I'm glad this is going away anyway. It's, I, I find they're kind of unsightly. These brake backing plates. One more thing to rattle. There you go. And this should just about do it. And there we go. No more brake backing plate. Now that we've got all that removed, a couple of, of items we just, that we're going to be using that we just want to make sure they're located. We also want to check this for cleanliness. Here's the, uh, the ears where we're going to be putting on our new uh, caliper adapter where the old caliper came off. And we just want to take a look at the hub just to make sure that this is a new car, but it's, uh, you know, sometimes it could be out a while. You want to make sure there's no rust, anything that, uh, that's going to affect our new insulation. But this all looks pretty good. So I think that we are ready now to begin putting on our Brembo Gran Turismo big brake kit. What we're going to do is reuse the stock bolts for the Mini Cooper. Uh, we're also going to start to use our torque wrench when we're assembling, and this application is going to call for 80 foot-pounds of uh, torque. So we're going to go ahead and put this in. Bracket goes front side with the ears we're going to be using for the caliper pointed out. Go ahead and get the top one started. Always a good idea. That way you got something hanging off it there. Put the bottom bolt in. Hand tighten them. Got our torque wrench set at 80 foot pounds. Always good to leave a torque wrench at zero and uh, just crank it up when you need it. Hold it on the end. Always tighten in the proper direction. And there we go. This is a clicker torque wrench. And we will hear a little click when we get there. And that's it. That tells you right there you've achieved 80 foot pounds. And there we go. And there's the bracket. All right. The next step then is to go ahead and install our rotor. We're going to go ahead and put that up. We're reusing again uh, our Torx bolt. So we can hang on to it. And then go ahead and get that started. This is a uh, pretty much just a centering or locating. Uh, bolt, and what we're going to do just as soon as we get this just on there, we're going to go ahead and uh, put on our studs. If you remember, we changed from the uh, mini lug bolts to studs for the wheels on our application. And what we're going to do is set them up there, make sure we've got this in the proper place. And our, uh, our wheels, as we had discussed earlier, the torque of the wheels to the plate is really what's going to keep this uh, 
this rotor in place. Flip those on, looks like we've achieved good fitment here. Got those in, we're going to go ahead now and just snug this up. There is no torque value for it again. It's a locating bolt and a keeper. And that looks good.